I got to go on a few morning walks with him there uh, in Hawaii. He'd go to Magic Island and, and walk out there, and you can get out to the point where you can see the surfers, because it goes way out in the surfers right there. And uh, he stood there one day and he said, uh, they're sea sufferers. They're preparing to take sharks and dolphin bodies. And uh, uh, then another day he said, uh, uh, like a, a day or two uh, after that, he said, they have mystic power. They're walking on water. I cannot do that. Uh, there is a lot of nice stories actually in Hawaii. Um, he walked through the prashadam room and he saw a grain of rice on the floor. And he said, whoever has spilled that rice will have to suffer. That's Krishna. His prashadam should not be wasted. Uh, another time, Sukadeva was, uh, he was cooking for Prabhupada. And uh, he was by his uh, desk. You should probably get some pastimes from Sukadeva. Uh, he tells the story real well. Uh, but he caught a bug and he asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, what should I do with this bug? And Prabhupada said, take him to the window. And so, you know, Sukadeva says, who, who can you ask anybody else what to do with a bug? They think you're crazy, but Prabhupada, you could ask him anything like And, you know, uh, so. He also, they asked him if they could uh, spray the cockroaches in the temple. And Prabhupada uh, said, no, it's simply you're unclean, you're lazy, so you don't want to clean. So you want to just uh, leave it dirty, then just keep killing the cockroaches. So he didn't want, unless it was, you know, extreme, uh, really uh, extreme emergency, he didn't want. And that reminds me of another story in Bombay. Uh, I just became Prabhupada's servant, and uh, Tamal was asking him, what about mosquitoes? Can we kill mosquitoes? And Prabhupada said, only if they're biting you. If they're biting you, you can, you can kill them. But before that, you can't, uh, you can't kill them. There was one uh, occasion when we were flying from Singapore to Australia. And uh, Hari Suri was his uh, personal servant at the time. They were seated up in the first class section. And I was seated uh, in the back in the um, coach section. And um, the plane must have hit an air pocket or something. And it, it seemed to drop very, very quickly, uh, maybe five or 10,000 feet, it seemed like. My stomach was in my head. That's all I could think of. And uh, it was like going down a roller coaster but it was a huge roller coaster because uh, it just continued for about uh, five or ten seconds. And uh, I remember getting up <laughs> and uh, uh, I was pretty shaken, although I was chanting at the time. And I walking up to Srila Prabhupada in the uh, front cabin and asking him if he was all right. And he looked like nothing had happened at all. And I said, to, I asked Srila Prabhupada, are you okay? And Srila Prabhupada said, yes, we can die at any time. <laughs> the first day that I assisted Srila Prabhupada in the kitchen was for my sister's wedding in New York. And Srila Prabhupada cooked in a very small galley kitchen in his New York apartment, uh, both sides uh, counters. And he gave me the singular task of making a very difficult preparation called aluka churi, which is still my Waterloo, because it's one of the most complex pastries to cook properly. It has to cook very uh, for a long time without becoming greasy, and that's almost uh, impossible. It's like the uh, elephant through the eye of a needle at the best of circumstances. But because the stuffing for this is mashed potatoes, it is even more difficult. If it's a picachuri that can blow up like a kashta, like a stuffed puri, then it's easy. This is very difficult. Uh, so for nearly eight hours, I was given that singular task of making alu kachori as well. Srila Prabhupada cooked a 14-course feast for the wedding single-handedly in his kitchen. And in the course of cooking that feast, oh, I made so many uh, mistakes from the very, very first day in his service. Um, the first uh, mistake I made was mm, I had a short, a very short skirt on and little t-shirt and sitting cross-legged and, and uh, I said, uh, Swamiji, may I have a cigarette? 
and he, he popped his head out the corner and he said, go wash your hands. So I went and washed my hands. And uh, so then he explained the four principles in Krishna consciousness, uh, four prohibitions, and no meat eating, no gambling, no illicit sex life, no intoxication. So then short time later, I said, Swamiji, uh, may I have a glass of water? Uh, and he said, go wash your hands. So then he explained the first and simple, foremost principle in cooking is to engage the senses in the service of the Lord, to cook for Krishna with love and devotion, and not think about our senses, our tongue, our sense of smell, the belly. This is cooking for Krishna. So then short time later I said, to, um, Swamiji, it's very hot in here, and it's wiping perspiration. Go wash your hands. So then he began a little bit, the simplest principles, uh, rudimentary principles of external cleanliness. And then he explained just the simplest touch of internal cleanliness by balancing both of them. Do, are we able to engage in the idea of serving Krishna through this art of cooking? So all three things, first day in the kitchen. I used to be a real fancy Chamra fanner. I'd do the cheddar, you know, like, and I'd get up there, and I thought I was the best chamber guy. And, the, and so then that's what I was doing for Papa in the garden. Two or three hours every morning, I'd fan him with the chamra. And so uh, one morning, Papa, you know, he had three sets of Japa beads, a little one, a medium one, and a real big one. And we had them all there by his house, and he'd pick out whatever one he wanted that day. Uh, so he was sitting there chanting, and uh, his eyes were shut, and a fly landed right above his lip here. And I, and I thought, oh, what am I going to do? So I took my finger and I got real close to him without touching him. And I was going like that, but the fly just kept walking around. And he wouldn't leave. And so after a minute, prop, I'd open one eye and looked at me. And I jumped back a little bit, you know, because I was kind of close to him. And he said, you are fanning around the world, but you can't get the fly off my face. Give me that chamra. And so he took the chamra. And he, he, could, he said, do like this. And he fanned it right on his face. And, uh, and so... Uh, a few minutes later, it happened again, a fly landed, and, and I was a little bit hesitant, but I brushed it on his face, and then he nodded and said, yes, very nice. So we were flying uh, from Mauritius to Durban, and uh, it was a Qantas airline that was coming from Perth, Australia, and uh, there was uh, some type of a rugby match that had taken place with the South African and New Zealand teams uh, at that time, and... Uh, there were a lot of uh, rugby types on the plane. And we had a seat in the non-smoking section. And uh, <laughs> I was sit seated beside Srila Prabhupada, and there I was with my little British, ha British hat <laughs> uh, and uh, shirt and coat and pants. And uh, people were smoking in the non-smoking section. And, uh, of course, I was disturbed by it because I didn't like it. But I was also concerned for Srila Prabhupada's welfare. And so I asked one of the uh, stewardesses, uh, uh, could you please ask them to not smoke? This is a no smoking section. So she informed the rugby type guys <laughs> who uh, were drinking quite a bit as well uh, to stop smoking. And uh, of course they didn't stop smoking. So I again went to inform the stewardess, uh, can you please ask them again? And Prabhupada stopped me. He said, what is the difference between us and them if we can't tolerate these sort of things? He said, don't be an ordinary, common, foolish man. 